My number one is this movie called Marley and Me from 2008, starring Owen Wilson, Jennifer Aniston, directed by David Frankel. And the logline is a family learns important life lessons from their adorable but naughty and neurotic dog. This movie has like a special place in my heart only because like I said, Bruno is a golden lab as well. And so is Marley. Mm-hmm. We watched this movie way before I think we got a dog, um, but it did overlap, I think, in our rewatches of when mm-hmm. we finally had Bruno. But to me, kind of this movie, the them- Thematic as to why I put this on here is that it represents two things. One, dogs are a handful, you know, of all the adorable things that we talk about them and how much we love them. It is, it is a lot of work. And I think this movie really gets at that. But then the bigger theme to me is like, like we've been saying, dogs are true partners in your life. And I don't think I've seen a movie, I'm sure there's one out there which kind of really shows the entire lifespan of Owen Wilson and the family's life mm. uh, and what kind of a role Marley plays from his early days to when this family is all grown up and settled through moves and kids and relationships and jobs and everything. If there is one constant, it is this dog. And we've been talking a lot about you know, the hero and the relationship with that hero with the dog. This is really a love story, if you will, between Owen Wilson and Marley. Everybody else is sort of, in a way, tertiary to that. But I think th- the reason why this movie rings true is that there's more to it. Um, you see the dog struggling and loving other people in their life as well. Like I love the diff- how Jennifer Aniston, who's like a new person entering this pack, mm-hmm how they show that relationship develop where there's a lot of struggle where she's trying to manage home and babies and everything and moves and Marley is being Marley being super annoying and demanding but then there's also tenderness and love between them and how Marley stands up and helps and supports while also being very annoying and very demanding and challenging I think that's pretty beautiful um, so yeah, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't call this like a great movie by any means, but I just think it has personal relevance to me for those reasons, because uh, it just shows a full life. Um, and some of the scenes that I still think of, you know, when they're going on vacation and talking to the dog sitter and giving her things to do and take oh, care right. of the dog and what a train wreck that ends up being. I always think of that. I always think of the scene when they're at the dog trainer in the park somewhere and how poorly that goes. Um, Jen struggling with the baby and and Marley comforting her later. I always think of that. Um, And then, of course, you know, the final scenes of when they're sitting at the beach, um, Owen Wilson and, and Marley, and then finally when he has to be put down, um, I'm a total mess at that scene, even though I know what's coming. I've watched that scene a million times, but it's just, just so sad because it's probably the truest relationship you can have in your life in a way. And there's so much said in the unsaid between these two people that you really see that Owen Wilson has not shared those things even with Jen and they have a great marriage and, and everything, but but it's just a sep- special bond that you, you form with your dog. Um, so yeah, I... I do love this movie and and it has actually pretty good performances again for there not being much on the page in terms of depth I think Owen Wilson really brings a lot Jennifer Aniston that I'm sort of you know okay on I think she's actually pretty good in this movie um, and it's kind of rounds off the family and has her own kind of struggle and art that like I was saying about earlier as well so yeah that's my number one Marley and me. Yeah, so I had been, uh, I'd not seen this movie before the podcast. I'd actually been um, avoiding this movie, knowing that the dog right. dies in the end. It's like, I don't need to see that. I, this is going to be, you know, hard. I don't want to, I don't want to see that. Um, so this podcast finally had me watch <laughs> Marley and me. Um, it was, this movie, I, it was interesting. I have a lot of um, different reactions to it. Um, the the first thing was just, I was surprised, I guess, that uh, the movie was so much about just Owen Wilson's life and every, like, kind of like you were saying too, 
like a lot, even Jennifer Aniston, his kids, Marley, it's like, they all seem to be um, like outside of what the main thread was, which is how his life was going. Um, And it was interesting too, how his life was sort of like, he didn't really seem to have a lot of control over it. It was Jennifer Aniston comes in. She's like, Hey, I have a checklist of everything that I want to do. We get married at this age. We have kids at this age. Then we need the house and we need the job. And it's just like this checklist, which is he just sort of then has kind of gets plugged into her plan and just sort of like then drifts through this life that I feel like he isn't really getting the most out of. Like, I don't get the sense from him that like, he's making choices. It's like, Oh, well, you know, I have to grow up. So therefore, like, I'm going to do this because that's what it's like being an adult. It, he just seems like um, this list, 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 there's a the word, like, uh, you know, 30 year old, though, yeah. again, he's 40 in the movie. Um, at some point in the movie, I guess he turns 40. The timeline is a little hard to understand. But I, thought, I guess it was like, identif- not identifying with him, but like tracking that character be like, dude, like, you shouldn't live life like a checklist. Like, what are you doing? Like, don't, like, this is not a situation, you're going to regret this later on. Um, so that, that was kind of just interesting. Um, and Marley too, like, didn't also seem kind of like a, well, I'm getting a dog because at some point I'm going to have kids. So, and then his coworker tells him, you got to get the dog first. So he's like, okay, fine. I'll get the dog first. Um, and then it's like the dog, like showing up every once in a while in these other life moments of him. So it almost felt like his story where the dog was sort of peppered into it. And I never really got a sense much or like attachment to the dog throughout the film for some reason. Um, Mm -hmm. I just, I mean, maybe also the fact that like, this is one note joke of like the dog is never trained. And like, that's just consistently like just horribly um, uh, behavior, which getting back to again, now as a dog owner, I'm like, this is not funny. Like this shouldn't, I get, it's like kind of like you have the one scene where the dog is bad when he's a puppy, but like train your dog. Like he, he needs help. Like he shouldn't still be, eating couches at age five as a dog like that is that is totally on you like you are failing as right. a dog owner um so that was uh just kind of weird like that never kind of went in. I feel like there was no um Owen Wilson never kind of grows up either or like changes much which I thought was sort of interesting I thought it would be like okay well the dog teaches him this lesson and now he's like a better father or a better husband and I didn't really get that sense. So I thought that was just kind of interesting, like choice just as a, as a film. Um, I know that was based on, I think, uh, was based on a book that mm-hmm. was based on uh, columns a newspaper writer was writing. It's a true story-ish. Like it's inspired by a real, a real dog. Um, but it def- does kind of feel like episodic in that way. And yeah, there were some scenes where it's like, okay, the dog is helping um, the, you know, Jennifer Aniston when she has a miscarriage. And you see like kind of which dogs do like, can you reference this earlier um, with, with you notice it when your dog and I have and the dogs that I've been around too, like they kind of sense emotions and they right. can come and help you in those moments. So I thought those scenes were definitely, def- you know, true to life and spoke to me, but um, yeah, like he, it just was interesting. It's, it reminded me a lot of um, those, like, uh, like the dog I just felt had was almost not really a character. He was kind of like a prop. Like there's a lot of sitcoms where it's like, oh, well, we got to get rid of that old chair that we've had for 30 years. And it's like all the memories that we had on this chair and it's really sad, but like, okay, we got to throw it out because we're moving home. And like, there's a montage of all the moments of, you know, with the old chair. And that's almost kind of what I felt with the dog in this movie. Like he wasn't, I don't know. Like I just, I didn't feel that he was enough of a character that I was expecting at least going into it. And, you know, again, I I did, uh, the reason why I was avoiding this movie was the death scene. Um, and I did, you know, get emotional at that scene because it's like a dog's passing away. But I felt that the scene was like really um, manipulative and sort of like clunky in how they handle it. Like they start with the scene, not to get too much into like a really hard scene to, to you know, to, to talk about. But, OK, there's a dog on the table and they zoom in on like the drugs as they're putting it in. So I'm like, oh, wow, they're like, this is going to be super real. Just the dog passing away with Owen Wilson there and this. But then they start cutting to other family members. And it's like Jennifer Aniston's sad and the kids who never really had a relationship with the dog, they're all of a sudden like watching videos of the dog. And I'm like, none of this is earned. Like either you're going to do something very realistic and really like not sugarcoat at all and be like, look, this is sad part of life, which does capture the whole lifespan of a dog. Like you said, which I thought was cool. Um, It's like pick one, like either be very realistic or like incredibly schmaltzy and, and cutting to these kids, which had like, there were no big scenes of like the kids loving the dog. It was just sort of like, more about Owen Wilson's relationship with the dog. So I don't know, like I didn't, I didn't affect me as much emotionally as I thought. 
more I think due to like the filmmaking, I just didn't think was a landing for me on that, on that scene. Um, but uh, yeah, actually to sum it all up, actually, my, my thoughts on the film were this in the credits, they have all, you know, these scenes of like the dog running around. I'm like, Oh, this is cool. Like little home movies, all the, mo- uh, you know, Owen Wilson, Jennifer Aniston, um, you know, so-and-so play the kid at age five. I'm like, Oh, wow. It's like, okay. So I wonder how many dogs they filmed in, the, in this movie. How many played Marley? Okay. Where's the dog? Oh my God. The dogs weren't even listed in the credits. And then I went to IMDb. Really? There were three dogs used all uncredited. So I'm like, that to me sums up the movie. Like he isn't even given enough weight in the film to have a credit of the three dog actors who played Marley was not even mentioned. And that's how I felt the whole film treated just the dog in general. He was kind of like a non, a non entity to me. Um, but that's pretty sad that he was not listed. He wasn't um, credited because I love seeing the name of the dog and it's like, yeah. they were li- and the dog's the, the title it's Marley and me. It wasn't like Owen Wilson yeah. and the dog. And yeah. like, what a bad agent, whoever those agents were of those three dogs, just like, they, they were like, not, they were screwed out of that. Um, but yeah, it's sort of like that to me was a summation of like, I just felt the dog, what none of the, none of the stuff with the dog I felt was earned. Um, and the dog just sort of felt like he was just the piece of, uh, piece of the, the, the house or like, not like a real animal, I guess. Um, or, but yeah, that was, yeah. that was my takeaway from it, but I'm glad I finally did see it. Cause I know there's a movie everyone talks about as like, big dog movie and like obviously the scene where the dog passes away which is not something that you normally get in a movie um they usually kind of either don't show that or don't go through the entire life arc of the dog uh, which i did think was cool as a concept but i just didn't think the dog had enough yeah like agency in his own film yeah yeah i can see that dick um but i don't know like to me yeah i guess those are interesting choices for sure of like they're not being you know, the, the lead actor not being in control of their life and what have you. But, you know, there are people like this. There oh, are people yeah, yeah, yeah. Like For sure. Life just sort of passes by and things happen. And, and I think that is why maybe the rest of the characters, including the dog, feel a little bit proppy in, in his life because mm. that's sort of how his life is. Like nothing yeah. is that intentional, you know? And you're sort of getting like a Truman show like view into this person's life and all these things are happening. And so, yeah, you're not seeing, you know, a stated relationship development between the dog and, and the, and Owen Wilson's character. It's sort of more from, you know, a bit of a bird's eye view. And Mm -hmm. I don't know, I felt it uh, from the get go. And it's, it's sort of making the point that, this relationship is actually not a lovey-dovey one. And I get it. Like it's, you know, get a better trainer and train the dog. But yeah. if you put a pain on that for a little bit, yeah. like it's not a lovey-dovey relationship that you would normally have between a dog parent and their dog. It's actually a happenstance that these are people are even together. So right. the relationship and the love is almost like a byproduct of everything that you witnessed. And that's sort of how the movie's designed as well. It'll be super fake and I think inauthentic if we suddenly had relationship moments between these people because that's not who this character is this character is just a bystander in his own life you know sad yeah which is sad but there are people like that so to me the love is sort of like a derived takeaway and not you know the prime center of 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 the life of the character uh, and the movie, which I think is an interesting take. You know, because there are many movies as we listed mm-hmm. in our list where you see that arc, like Charles Gordon's character, for example, is yeah. like the opposite of what we are seeing here in a way. Um, but I think it's an interesting take, uh, which I think it's it's more to me the relationship is more of like I said a byproduct and more palpable as a viewer as opposed to from the point of view of the characters themselves, if mm-hmm. you will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe too, like as there's a scene in the film where you like, you know, Lone Wilson turns 40 and it's like, what am I doing with my life? And like, yeah, like we're older now, like we're middle age. And maybe like, I was just keen too much on his arc and just being like, wow, like, yeah, the, the end of the movie, the dog passed away is sad. But just looking at this guy's life, I'm like, this is really sad. And like, you mm-hmm. have a sad life that you gotta, you know, and tr- it's like if in the Truman show, if Truman never decided to get on that boat right. and go out at the end, he just sort of yeah. accepted his own fate and just kind of like, 
And yeah. that to me is just very, so like there's a somber that. sadness over it. And look, Wilson also was just, I mean, this was the first movie he made after his suicide attempt. Um, mm-hmm. And I wonder if just that was maybe coming across in this, in his performance in some way too, of just, you know, cause that's a very hard thing, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure he had to deal with, uh, maybe he was bringing a lot of that to this role. And I, that was the sadness that then I was getting from it. But that in a way like that was more sad, like his life story was sadder to me than like the dog passing away at the end. Um, though again, I, I did tear up with the dog passing away at the end Absolutely. as manipulative as that scene is like, you can't not cry when a yeah. dog has died on screen. Like, you know, totally. It, but, and but see, that's the thing, right? Like in a subtle way, the dog and the trials and tribulations that come with the dog propel, propel this character's life, Owen Wilson's life. Like if you remove the dog out of this person's life and Jen Aniston, I think this person is ending up as a homeless person probably. I think he'll be, be I think he'd be better like not to make the movie about honestly like I'm like Jennifer Aniston like yeah like this is not how you should be living your life and like to put this guy through this I I think they should have broken up is is what I'm saying and and he should have had a you know just I don't know now we're getting too much of the this this is about dogs I don't want to like you know this is not the love episode or the relationship episode I just thought I was not expecting like that I guess um kind of take on this this movie i just had it on faith okay i know what this is going to be it's like the dog growing up and affecting people in different ways and all the things how dogs change you and i'm like this guy didn't change at all and the dog just sort of seemed to be like another prop like you said even jennifer aniston her kid his kids they all sort of seem like props in this guy's life who just isn't i don't know having control of his own it's yeah but again maybe just my age and i'm keen too much in on that so but um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad i did see this and Yes, I did. I did cry when the dog died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a different kind of storytelling. Alex, yeah. not all movies can have arts and not all characters have to be likable. <laughs> oh, true. It's not that it wasn't likable. I just felt yeah. bad for him. I'm like, you know, you need something in your life. And like the dog just didn't, you know, help you see that, I guess. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.